Hello students and welcome. I'm Professor P, your guide to the world of technology and your professor of business and data here at Tulsa Community College. I want you guys to get ready to dive into our upcoming video where we're going to be exploring our course materials and providing any needed updates and clarifications for our course. So without anything else, let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Hi students, Logan Phillips here, Professor P. In this video, we're we'll going to be talking about your syllabus for our business, data, and science technology courses. Now, this is MSIS 2103. Uh, this will be one of the longer videos because there is quite a bit of material to cover inside of your syllabus. So before we even begin, let's answer the very first question. What, in fact, is a syllabus? Well, for technology, or I'm sorry, for, for college, the syllabus is sort of your guiding document. A lot of professors like to call it a contract. It's not really a contract because it's only enforceable from my side to you, meaning I can change it any time, I can modify the class at any time, I can change the point values at any time. So this is something that gives you basic guidelines, expectations, rules, and some covering information of how the class is supposed to operate. operate. So this is really like the playbook for the class, not so much as a contract, but you will be held to a lot of the standards that you find inside the syllabus. So inside your Blackboard course, you will find the syllabus underneath our opening documents. Uh, you can get in there and look at this. It is extremely important. Uh, you will have a syllabus quiz that is your very first assignment due once you have read, watched this video, and gone over the syllabus. So unfortunately for us, our syllabus is 41 pages. A lot of it is required by law, by the college, uh, required by other documentation, doesn't have necessarily impact on our class, but I'm required to have it in there. So we're going to skim over all that crap and we're going to focus on the things that you as a student actually need to know about and get down to the base information. So I try to make it as clean as I can, but let's go ahead in here. All right, so for your class, and this is for every MSIS 2103 Business and Data Science Technology course, your syllabus should look exactly the same. The very first top part, your course basic information, is where things will modify. You'll find out what semester you're in, what format we're offering it in. It'll tell you what room if we're inside of a face-to-face. -face. Give you your CERN number, so when you're dealing with your uh, student services, you'll have that, and of course, what room number we're in. Below that, you're gonna find three dates. You're gonna find our start date, an end date, and the final Friday. For our class, every single assignment always comes due on Fridays at 5 p.m. And the class itself will always end on the final Friday of finals week at 5 p.m. So final Friday at finals week at 5 p.m. is when the class is definitively over for all students. Now, the end date of the class is the academic calendar set by TCC. That comes in at Sunday, uh, which is after the final Friday of the finals week at 7 p.m. The reason our class and everything comes due on final Friday at finals week at 5 p.m. is because I have to have everything graded by the start of that following week. So final Friday at finals week at final 5 p.m., everything in the class is definitively due. You cannot turn anything in. The class will shut down. You will not be able to access anything. Then I'll turn your grades after that. Uh, contact information. Uh, you should see my big, beautiful, smiling face here. My name is Logan Phillips. I tend to go by Professor P when we're dealing with online. My office number is 455. I'm at the Metro campus. Um, or tep typically, I am on all four campuses, and I am mostly online. I only teach one face-to-face -face class at a time in the semester, so that's one day a week that I am face-to-face -face on campus technically at the Metro campus, and that's on Wednesdays. Uh, the rest of the time, I am physically online or between the campuses, so any contact with me has to go through email. And if you want a face-to-face, -face, uh, we don't do face-to-face, -face, we do Zoom. And the Zooms are recorded for future reference. It will be sent to you after our meeting. So anytime you need to talk to me, it is uh, through Zoom or through email. My email is logan.phillips1 at tulsacc.edu. I'm in the College or School of Business Information Technology. Um, cell phone, office phone number. I do not provide these numbers to you guys. Because I am at every different campus, I'm all over the place, I am seldom in my physical office, I do not provide my cell phone number to students at all. And the phone system at the TCC, it might be six weeks before I go back into that office and happen to look at a voicemail. And there might be 10,000 voicemails from different scammers, different telemarketers, different everything. So it's, it's useless. Um, 
if you need to speak with me you send an email request a zoom meeting and we will do the zoom that way but we don't do cell phones we don't do office phone numbers we don't communicate through phone we communicate through ways that can be recorded and can be shared out so that we're making sure we stand in a good legal standing um, the school office that's the business department our department the school of business and information technology is at southeast campus room 4211 Office hours. Uh, my office hours are various. Uh, if they are during the actual given professional work week, I work a professional schedule that is 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday. On Fridays, I am in required meetings all the time, and the rest of the time, if I'm not in class, then if you want to meet with me during office hours, it has to be scheduled. Uh, so there's no walk-in hours where you can just stop by my office. The likelihood is I won't be there or I'm not on a set schedule. But if you do need to meet with me, I'm happy to do so. We do it by Zoom. Um, and again, my work week is Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. I do not work weekends, I do not work nights, and I do not work when the university is closed. So if there's a holiday, spring break, uh, fall break, uh, inclement weather where the ice is, roads are iced and we can't get to campus, if the college is closed, I'm shut down, I'm closed, I'm not working, and I really don't expect you guys to as well. So this course is designed to be able to complete it during the regular week. Um, I only work a professional schedule. You will be allowed to work ahead. You will be allowed to work on the weekends. But anytime you communicate with me at night or on the weekends, it will not be answered until two business days um, during the regular week. So if you email me at 5 p.m. on Thursday, you're not going to hear back from me until Monday or Tuesday because of how the schedule is designed. Uh, course description, this is a problem solving data analytics tools and technology course that are key to organization and decision making. Uh, we are going to emphasis is placed on decision making in spreadsheets and databases. Uh, key information systems and cybersecurity concepts are also going to be studied. There are no prereqs. The next course is BADM 2233, which is business analytics. Um, so we have a required textbook, which is business driven technology. The information is here. We are an inclusive classroom, which means as a student in this class, you will get access to the textbook or the virtual textbook um, on the very first day of class. There's no need to go to the bookstore and purchase anything. There's no need to go online and purchase anything. It is automatically charged to your bursar account. You do not need to purchase anything for this class. You are automatically charged for it and will get access to it on day one. Uh, you do need a PC, internet connection, Microsoft Office 2019 or newer, and you're going to need um, Power BI by Microsoft, which is a software system we use. All of these things can be given to you for free. Uh, Power BI is free from Microsoft uh, for students. Uh, Microsoft Office 365 is free from Tulsa Community College for students. And the PC is either new or you can come into the labs and use those labs. Now, Email, you are provided a student email from TCC. I am required to communicate to you through that email only. I cannot communicate to you through your private emails because I, I can't verify that it's actually you talking to me. So make sure you check your TCC email. Uh, there's lots of t uh, student support services. Go and check those. Uh, let's talk about professionalism and accountability. All right, so one of the key tenets of this course is personal responsibility. This course is designed to function exactly like a workflow. Uh, as if you're going into industry, you're going to be given a task, you're going to be expected to research, follow through with stuff outside of the classroom, create a deliverable, present it at a time frame by deadlines to get points or value for it. So this is just like if you go into work and your boss asks you for a project to be created, they're not going to walk you through it hand by hand, step by step. They're going to show you some tricks. They're going to expect you to be, have an understanding and be able to learn on your own a little bit, take initiative and grow your understanding and then present it back to your job in a timely manner. Uh, one of the key tenets that college students in the modern times seem to have this idea of is that they are a customer and that their tuition, the money that they pay the university, pays my salary, so they are the customer and I am a customer service agent. That cannot be further from the truth. As a student in this course, you are not the customer. You are the product that is being formed for society. Our taxes, the society as a whole, has decided that we need an educated workforce. We need people to know how to do things. They tell me what I need to teach, what I have to teach, how I have to teach it. They tell me what I have to verify that you have an understanding of. And then they verify that with grades, with diplomas, and that kind of stuff. So when you're coming into this class, you're not the customer. 
you are the thing that is being created in the factory <laughs> you are the product so we're going to take you into this class we're going to give you a tremendous amount of information we're going to prepare you for the workforce we're going to prepare you for the society we're going to get to you where you can actually make a little bit of money get into a new field learn some new stuff but we're going to grow the quality of human being that you are so you are the product being formed by the classrooms so what this means is simply by paying tuition or trying your best doesn't mean you're going to get passing grade. An average student doing an average amount of work in this class will receive an average grade. Average is a 70%. If you go above that and you're exceptional, you will earn more. If you are below that and you have problems, you might learn earn less. Uh, but an average student in this class will earn an average grade if they put in average work, and that's a 70%. So don't think just because you're taking the class, you are entitled to a certain grade. You must work and earn the grade and show mastery of the content. All right, uh, for concurrent enrollment students, dual enrollment, as a high school student, you are enrolled in a dual enrollment class. That means you're existing in a high school environment and in a collegiate environment. In the collegiate environment, in higher academia, in your college, you will be treated as an adult. No more parents, no more hand-holding. If you treat this course the same way that you treat those high school courses, you will fail this course. And no counselors, none of your high school teachers, your parents will be able to convince me in any way, shape, or form to modify, give special treatments, or any of that kind of stuff. In college, you are treated as an adult, and an adult produces, learns, and shows mastery for the grade that they earn. So make sure you understand that if you are a high school student taking a dual enrollment course in the college course, you will be treated like an adult. Uh, parents, significant others, family members, friends, um, other people are not taking this class. You are. I have laws that dictate who I can and cannot speak with. I will never speak with anybody that is not physically taking my course. So if you are the student, I'm happy to discuss your grades, your conduct. I'm happy to discuss your progress, help you out. But I will never talk to your parents, your significant other, your brothers and sisters, your friends, your colleagues. They cannot ask me anything at all about the class or about your grades or about your progress. Even if you give them permission as a professor, I will not speak to anybody except the enrolled student in my class. Now, with that being said, and in the past I've had this happen, if you give your enrollment login information to your parents and have them log in and do the work for you, or you do it with your wife, your husband, your significant others, you will get a failing grade in the class and be turned in for academic dishonesty. You are the one enrolled. You must be the one that does the work. Communications, make sure you have your email address, academic dishonesty. Uh, this is a big issue in my class. Every instructor has an issue that they're really hardcore about. Mine is academic dishonesty or plagiarism, those type of things. If you are caught with academic dishonesty, plagiarism, copyright infringement, any of that kind of fun stuff, you won't just fail the assignment that you do it in. I will give you a zero in the entire course on a single instance of cheating. If you cheat in my class in any way, shape, or form, or you plagiarize in my class in any way, shape, or form, if you use artificial intelligence to create materials for my class, and I catch you, you will receive a zero in the class. You will be turned in for academic dishonesty to the university, and I will cause some problems there for you that can th do things like take away your financial aid for the rest of your life. It is a big deal. Don't plagiarize. Don't cheat. Don't turn in other people's work. Don't use artificial intelligence. This is a zero tolerance class for this. Uh, university statements about academic dishonesty, what it is, you can find those here. Uh, special accommodations. All right, so this course offers no incompletes or administrative withdrawals. I will not withdraw you for any reason in this class with one exception. And that's the WN date, which is federally mandated. If you do not accomplish any task by a date of the federally mandated WN date, that's withdrawal non-attendance date, which is available on your Blackboard site, I will drop you from the class and unenroll you from the, or the, this particular course. After that WN date, if you have remained in the class, you have accomplished a task to stay in the class, under no circumstance will I withdraw you, provide you an incomplete, or give you an administrative withdrawal. It goes back to that you are an adult. You must watch your academic calendar. You must choose if you would like to stay in this class. I will not make that choice for you. So at the end of the semester, if you have never logged in except for that first week, you will receive an F because you've done no work. 
if you're at 60 percent and it's the drop ad date and you're just not feeling the class and you don't drop the class i'm not going to come in and give you an administrative withdrawal you are expected to be the adult to choose what is best for your schedule what's the best for your world and you have to make that decision now with that being said there are some exceptions to every rule that's just the our functionality of the reality in, of the world jury duty if you have to leave for jury duty I will give you extensions on your homework assignments and those type of things. You have to tell me before the jury duty, not after. Military service. I'm a veteran myself. I've been activated, all that kind of fun stuff. If you're in the military and you get activated, you get brought into drill, you get brought into uh, emergency response, if you get any of those type of things where you have received orders and are stuck where you cannot accomplish my class, tell me beforehand, before you leave, and we'll make those modifications and make sure you're doing well if that's an incomplete administrative withdrawal whatever you need but you have to tell me beforehand and again as a veteran i know what orders look like so you'll be expected to provide paperwork pregnancy if you are pregnant you need to reach out to the disability resource center and get accommodations through them same thing with disabilities now incompletes to request an incomplete this is the college rule you have to have completed 60 percent of the course or better and you have to have a passing grade I have never had a student in 12 years of teaching at the college level that has requested an incomplete meeting those two requirements. So I do not give incompletes. But if you fall into one of the other special circumstances and you request an incomplete, you have to have completed 60% of the class and you have to have a passing grade in the 60% you've done. Now, after the final grades are posted to your Blackboard site or to your grade book in your transcripts, no modifications will be given in any way shape or form no matter if it's military pregnancy disability incomplete once grades are posted the class is over i am no longer your professor we are done with it we are moving on that is what you have earned uh, assignments of course low to complete uh to be successful in this course frequent participation is important new material might be added things might be changed new instructions might be changed if there's errors in the technology and i fix them you need to check the courses frequently to make sure you're staying up to date accomplishing the task as you're supposed to now all assignments are due by the pacing schedule uh, the schedule is here in your syllabus we'll show you where that's at you are expected to meet the requirements of the deadlines extensions to deadlines are not given for any reason flat out the assignments are set to automatically sh shut down if they are not turned in by the deadline then it is a zero for that assignment uh, the course itself will close on the final Friday of finals week at 5 p.m. Um, anything turned in after that final Friday of finals week at 5 p.m. will be counted as a zero. No exceptions. Um, so if it's not submitted on time, it's not submitted for a grade. Now you're free to do it. You're free to submit, but I just simply won't give you any points for it. All right, plagiarism. Anything that subverts the learning goals is not clearly demonstrating that you are the one doing your work is plagiarism. That's cheating. That's not a mag zero on the course. Now, learning outcomes, general education statement, program learning outcomes, course learning outcomes. Uh, you can read these. They're not super important. This is required stuff for the college. Uh, how the course is structured. There's lots of modules. In fact, there's eight modules and a capstone. So you're going to be doing nine modules all together. Each module is organized in the exact same manner. You work from the top to bottom. Uh, there is a pretest. There is an ebook. There are lecture videos. There is a project. There is an essay type case study, and there's discussion board integrate actions that you must do with your fellow students. Thousand point class, uh, you can see the point letter grade values are here. Um, if you have a problem with the grades, if you say, Professor Phillips, you screwed up, you graded my assignment a two, and I know for a fact I earned 20 out of 20 points, you send me an email, and I say, Yep, I'm an idiot. I'm fat thumbed it and I didn't put the zero in you got 20 out of 20 we're good to go if you have a grade dispute for the class itself at the end of the class and you say professor Phillips you turned me in as a C and I know my points were 856 I should have got a B I'm gonna go into your grade book check everything go yep I screwed up I'm gonna fix your grade right now we're gonna change it around we're gonna do everything we need to do but the counterpart of that is if you jump ship and you go higher than me without ever speaking to me your professor in the class and you say man i know for a fact i got 20 out of 20 on this assignment and he only marked me as two i'm gonna go speak to the dean and i'm gonna complain about him without ever having spoken to my superior in the class which is your professor then the answer is a no i will not change any grades if you do not have the proper respect for me as your professor to speak with me 
then I will not modify anything that is found. What I put in will be the grade that you received. So I am always happy to work with you. I'm always happy to double check. I am human. I make mistakes. It happens all the time. Um, if I find a mistake I made, I will fix it. If I find a mistake that uh, I made that it would hurt you if we stayed with it, I'll make sure that we fix it in a way that is beneficial to you. But you have to talk to me. If you go above, you go and you call the academic advising, or you call the dean, you call the president of the university, and you make complaints about me before ever speaking with me, then we're going to stop. I'm not going to deal with it. We're going to say no, the definitive answer on any request that you have, because you never spoke with me. And at that point, there is a grade dispute process that is formal. It takes about a semester and a half to do, and we will start the paperwork to do the grade dispute process. Um, on a counterpart of that, if you ever threaten to bring in lawyers or attorneys or to sue me or that kind of fun stuff, all communication will cease. I will stop grading your assignments. I will remove you from the class. I will turn you into the university. And at that point in time, any communication must go through the lawyers. Uh, we will be done at that point. So the whole focus of this is, I'm here to see you succeed. I want to see you succeed in my classroom. I want you to learn the materials and love it the same way I do. Talk to me first and we will come up with an answer that benefits so you can prove mastery, so that we can fix the errors and we can work together. But if you show disrespect and you do something stupid, then I'm gonna be nope and we're gonna do things very intensely paperwork based or legally based because that's the options we have. All right, course withdrawal, this is TCC's policy, academic dishonesty, all this information is part of TCC's required stuff. Uh, technical issues. Um, I am not responsible for your personal computers, TCC computers, the websites, the internet, uh, any of that kind of stuff. If any of it goes down, there are support services around. You got to call them and go through that process. I, I'm not allowed to fix your computers. I'm not allowed to work on anything, and I don't have administrative control of any of the websites. So, if things go down, things go down. You need to call TCC's Call 2000. You need to call McGraw Hills uh, Tech Support. Um, technical issues on your end, if your internet goes down, your computer goes down, is not an excuse for extending the deadlines of assignments. TCC has wonderful computer labs. If you're stuck and you can't complete something in home, come to campus, all of them have computer labs, and complete the assignments here on campus. Uh, LMS and digital submissions, this is a big one because students have tried this in the past. You're going to upload documents in this class. You're going to have to learn how to use PDFs, Microsoft Word, Excel. If you don't know how to use those, you're going to have to use a PC to turn in documents in a specific format. The webs or the uh, campuses have resources. If you don't know how to do that, they will teach you how. But if you submit an assignment with a document attached, that is the document that I will grade. If you turn in a corrupt document, and you haven't checked to see your submission is good, the corrupt document will be graded as a zero. If you turn in the incorrect document, a previous assignment, a blank document, that is what I will grade. Whatever you, the adult, submit is what will be graded for the assignment. And since I grade two days after the assignment is due, there is no resubmission. So make sure you check everything you upload that it is correct that it is the correct format, that it is the correct assignment, the correct uh, document, whatever it needs to be, and that's not corrupt. Because whatever is submitted is what will be graded. Uh, Well-being, uh, I hope you guys have good mental health. I hope you guys have those kind of things, uh, that you're in a good place in your life. Um, a bad mental health day is not an excuse for an extension of deadlines. If you need to take time, work that into your schedule. We're pretty flexible on the dates and the time frames you can work on stuff, but the due dates do not change for this class no matter what you're going through. So make sure you program in, either work ahead with the expectation that you might have a bad day, but uh, all of that needs to be said that mental health does not constitute an acceptable excuse for requesting an extension on deadlines. Now, there is an item called the Cleary Act. This is a federal law. I am what's called a mandatory reporter. I don't need to know about your mental health issues, uh, your disabilities. Uh, you're free to tell me those things. Um, whatever's going on in your life, I'm open, I'm here for you, but understand that anything you tell me, I have to report out to other people. So if you say, Professor Phillips, I'm having a terrible time, I've just been in a domestic abuse situation, can I get an extension on Module 3's assignment? I'm gonna work with you because that's a terrible situation to be in. But then I have to alert campus security, the police. 
I have to alert the disability resource office. I have to alert a bunch of other people that you, the student, have told me that you've been in a domestic abuse situation, that you're in an unsafe environment, that you're having problems with alcoholism, that you had an experience, uh, bad criminal activity, that you had any of these types of things. I immediately have to involve all these different groups and make sure that they're alerted to who you are, where you're at, and wrap you around with all those services. That's the Clery Act mandatory reporting. So be careful what you tell me about your personal life if you don't want it to be conveyed to a bunch of other people. I cannot be a confidant to any student for any reason. Uh, diversity and inclusion statement, if you prefer to be called a different pronoun, a different name, um, I don't care. Whatever you want to be, whoever you want to be, I'm happy to call you that. Um, I will do my best. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it, but it will never be intentionally disrespectful. With that stated, all of our systems are organized digitally. So whatever name you, the student, formulated inside the TCC systems is the name that will go out from the announcements, from emails, from all this kind of stuff. My grade book is situated from that. So whatever your legal name is that you turn into TCC, that will be the name the majority of material is referenced and sends back out. Now, if we're speaking and you tell me you have a different name that you prefer to go by, a nickname, whatever it is, I'm happy to call you whatever you want to be called. Uh, required syllabus materials, you can read through all this. It's a bunch of required stuff from TCC, of course. Uh, your tentative score schedule. This course is broken down to eight modules plus a ninth module, which is called the Capstone module. Uh, module one, we're going to do understand the information age, business strategies. Module two, business processes, information systems. Module three is ethics, security, data management. Module four is advanced analytics and decision making. Module five is organizational decision making and supply chain issues. Module six is customer relationship, enterprise resources. Module seven is emerging technologies and e-business. And module eight is web technologies, wireless networks, and project management. Now, what you can see here on each of these modules in the score schedule, I have told you that we're going to be teaching you about two hours and 10 minutes to three hours and 14 minutes worth of material. Now, once I have taught you, you will be doing different assignments on top of that. So this is the teaching hours, not the assignment hours broken down here. Uh, to, uh, your course schedule is here. This is when things will come due. If you are in a 16-week course, your module one will be due on week two on Friday at 5 p.m. All assignments always come due on Friday at 5 p.m. Module two will be on week four, Friday at 5 p.m. If you're in my four-week course, Module 5 will be due on week three on Wednesday at 5 p.m. <laughs> so all things always come due at 5 p.m. Anything submitted after this uh, schedule will be counted as an automatic zero. All right, module assignments. Each of your module is broken down basically the exact same way. You're going to start off with a pre-quiz. Now, this pre-quiz is a pass-fail quiz. You take it, you will pass. If you don't take it, you will fail it. Uh, this is designed to judge your pre-existing knowledge. Uh, what that means is I'm not going to teach you anything before you open up a module and immediately take a quiz. I don't expect you to know anything. I'm judging from the beginning of the module to the end of the module what information you come in with versus how much information you leave the module with. So the pre-quiz is a pass-fail. This is a hand-graded assignment which means it will show in your grade book exactly what you earned. And then as I grade them each week, I will switch it over to a pass fail model. So it will show you what you got right, what you got wrong. Uh, but it, then I will hand grade them at the end of the grading period. Uh, you will then have lectures and supplemental videos. Uh, these videos will break down the content from the ebook. It will go into more detail. These are unlimited attempts. They are also no point value. If you can pass the class without watching a single one of my lectures, without watching any supplemental videos, you are free to. I wouldn't suggest it, but you are free to. Now, your smart book is auto-graded. This is the bulk majority of the content you're going to be learning. It is repetitive. And I'm going to say this again. It is repetitive. This is the assignment that takes the most amount of time. You are going to do things over and over. It's going to ask you similar questions over and over. This is to root memorization and beat the content into your head. This is going to the most tenant or uh, restrictive environment 
it's going to be repetitive it's going to be a little difficult and it's going to be time consuming so this is the part that you're going to have to spend a lot of time on i'm going to strongly suggest you do a little bit of it every day instead of trying to do it all in one setting between the smart book and the lectures on this module like say module one you will spend between two hours and three hours to accomplish that so that's where that or that number comes from uh, your case study now each case study is designed to gauge you in a very deep thought of the content and implications of the data inside the module you're going to write a thousand to fifteen hundred word essay including outside research citing your materials you're going to create a word document that you're going to upload to the blackboard site and then you're going to copy that word document over to a discussion board post and then you're going to engage with your fellow classmates about what they wrote what you wrote and you're going to discuss in great detail all about your case studies these are meant to take you into a very in-depth knowledge and understanding of the materials this is going to be the most difficult piece that you're going to work in these case studies now these are also some of the highest value point pieces you're going to do here next you're going to have a power bi project for all eight or yes for all eight modules this is a pass fail submission untimed unlimited attempts we're going to show you how to do a case study or a, a project we're going to show you the power bi all the different pieces of it you're either going to do it or not it doesn't matter but at the very end in your capstone module you do have a power bi project that is high point value single attempt and that is your final capstone project that all of the eight module power bi projects will build up to so if you go into the capstone module and try to do the power bi project there without having done any of the previous modules you are highly likely to fail one of the highest point value pieces there so make sure you do your power bi projects at the very end of every module you will have a module exam that covers everything from the lectures the smart book the case study the power bi project it is a comprehensive module exam it is a single attempt it is automatically graded so you'll know exactly what you earn as soon as you're finished with it it is a single setting time period once you start you must finish in one go um, it is a proctored exam meaning you can't open up other websites you can't open up your book it is a high value exam that is difficult to accomplish to judge what you actually learned from all these other materials so that is how every single one of your modules is formatted and you will do them in order of the pre-quiz lectures smart book case studies power bi and then your module exams pass this in your syllabus i break down what your module exams will cover the chapters we're going to be covering grading criteria introduction of the materials all that kind of fun stuff uh, for all eight modules after that we are going to break down into even more information about your case studies in depth this is where you can find your requirements for length what you're going to be doing an introduction of it uh, the uploading requirements for your submission where you're going to be posting uh, how I expect you to engage with your peers and how to respond to feedback and continue participation and we're going to talk about your evaluation criteria and the common causes of failures and a little bit of warning then we're going to talk about your module exams please read through all this because it's the same thing your power bi projects and that is your entire syllabus now i understand that this is a 41 page document and there's a lot of information here so we graze through it very quickly but you're going to need to download this print it out keep it in your notebook reread it because it has a lot of your rubrics materials and overview of the class as well as the contact information everything that's inside of the syllabus is basically restated elsewhere as well so if you don't read back on this and you don't understand how to do the case studies once you open the case study all the information about the case study is going to be there so guys if you have any questions comments concerns i'm here for you otherwise enjoy the class this was your syllabus your tentative schedule your breakdown of the class your k or your materials your course materials all that kind of fun stuff in one centralized location remember that this can be changed at any point in time um, if i make a change to the syllabus i will send out an announcement update it online and let you guys know just that otherwise have a very fruitful day jump in do some work and remember that you're going to have a quiz about your syllabus as your very first week's assignment all right guys good luck bye guys